shattered. We have been the strangers to the covenant, cut off from the Lord, but now we're being restored. It is just as the Almighty has said through Jeremiah, Behold, I am going to send for many fishermen, declares the Lord, and they will fish for them. And afterwards I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them from every nation and every hill and from the clefts of the rocks. I submit to you that we, the Ephraimite people of northern Israel, are assembling this day as a result of a 2,000-year fishing expedition. <laughs> Therefore, we gratefully, humbly, and yet boldly proclaim the reason we can claim any Israelite identity is because of Yeshua ben Yosef ben Nabi ben Nazareth, the one we hold to be our Messiah. He himself said that he had come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And about him, the apostles taught that all who believe on him are grafted into the olive tree that is Israel and into the co commonwealth of covenant with our Jewish brethren. We cannot, we dare not hide the fact that Yeshua is our Messiah. But we will not demand that others believe as we believe. Our Jewish brethren should not fear that they are targets of conversion attempts. We do not ask them or anyone else to accept that Yeshua is Messiah, but we do ask that they respect the fact that he is our Messiah. And that without Yeshua, we have no claim or hope of returning to the nation of our fathers and mothers. For that reason, we must resist any and all efforts to separate us from our Messiah. And this is a test, and perhaps the greatest test. Can Jewish and non-Jewish Israelites accept one another as brethren and work to build this nation even through disagreement on so vital a question as the identity of the Messiah? I submit that we can. Amen. Once again, we take instruction from Isaiah, who speaks of Messiah, saying, Then he shall become a sanctuary, but to both the houses of Israel a stone to strike and a rock to stumble over, and a snare and a trap for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Both houses of Israel have stumbled over the question of Messiah and taken offense at one another because of this question. Yet once the presence of the stumbling stone is acknowledged, then perhaps we may find ways to walk so that we no longer stumble over it. That is what we require now. We do not need any further doctrinal arguments and disputes which cause division, either between ourselves and Judah or among ourselves. The hunters are coming and they are ruthless. We have seen them remove the heads of those who do not revere their God. Do we have any doubt that they yearn to do the same thing to us? I guarantee that if given that opportunity, they will not first ask what each of us believes about Yeshua or how we pronounce the sacred name of the Almighty. <laughs> In their eyes, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, male and female, bond and free. What is the true merit of our doctrinal differences when faced with such wicked evil? <coughs> What is the point of debate over questions that the Creator alone can and will answer in the time of His choosing? We have work to do now in those things He's called us to do, and if we do not do that work, then multitudes will perish 